So I've recently stumbled across a very interesting article which compared the current state of leading publicly traded space companies. This article is authored by Spacecase and will be linked in the description. We'll go through his article covering everything from SPAC space performance compared to the wider market, valuation of these space companies and finally comparison of the current financial state of each of the companies so you'll want to stick around. First of all, space SPACs declined by 7.4% in November while the overall market actually performed quite well, with the S&P 500 increasing by 5.6% and the Nasdaq increasing by 5.5%. Interestingly, Legacy Space also increased by 5.3%. On the other hand, Cathie Wood's Innovation ETF continued on its downward trajectory, decreasing by 2.1%. Moving on to year-to-date performance, we can see that Legacy Space is the only included grouping that is positive this year, bringing in some lovely alpha, perhaps because of the defence stance. Of course, Space SPACs are down far more than the wider market and closely follow the ARK Innovation ETF in terms of returns. Now moving on to Case Taylor's breakdown of performance by type of space company. Launches were down 8% on average, but perhaps a lot more if you don't look at either of the Virgin companies, Virgin Galactic and Virgin Orbit. Satellite constellations are up on average, but a far more mixed bag if you remove Arquit from the equation. Finally, manufacturing and infrastructure had a terrible month, being down an average of 33%. Personally, I would agree with the classifications, however I do think it's important to remember that yes, companies like Rocket Lab, the first thing that you think of is launch, and that's what they're most well known for. But at the moment, a very significant portion of their revenue is a result of space systems and other sources, not just launch. Looking at 2023 enterprise value compared to revenue, we can see that Virgin Orbit and Rocket Lab seem to be the safest bets out of the four launch companies. In terms of constellations, valuations seem to be more consistent with Black Sky and Spire Global perhaps being the best value through the scope of this metric. Finally, Redwire sits with the lowest 2023 enterprise value to sales ratio. However, it's important to remember that these ratios cannot be used on their own as there's often a reason for lower valuations such as debt or lower revenue slash earnings growth potential. The two biggest movers in terms of valuation in November were Virgin Orbit and Velo 3D. Virgin Orbit's ratio increased from 3.4x to 4.7x, mainly due to a decrease in revenue expectations for 2023, meaning you would now have to pay more for each dollar of expected revenue in 2023. Velo 3D, on the other hand, had its ratio decline from 4x to 2.1x, largely due to a large 48% decline in market cap over the November month. Now onto the earnings report card, a really interesting and concise summary of the financial state of each of these major publicly traded space companies. Of course, I highly recommend reading the article for yourself after this video. It's great and also make sure to research yourself before making any investment decisions. So look at the 10 Qs, the earnings reports, all that jazz. Firstly, Spire, Velo, Astra, Rocket Lab and Black Sky all have a decelerating free cash flow burn. It's important to remember that they are all still burning cash at different rates and decelerating at different rates as well. Next up is Capital Runway, so how long can they afford to burn their capital for? Most companies' runway date got further into the future, giving them more time to burn capital and money. Apart from Virgin Galactic, which is on track for April 2026, which is still the furthest away out of all of them. Black Sky also only had a minimal change in their runway date. And again to reiterate, Virgin Galactic is the furthest away and Rocket Lab is second with January 2026. Now for the next few categories, we will ignore AST Space Mobile and all of the others have had a quarter and quarter revenue increase apart from Velo 3D, who experienced a mild decrease in revenue. Next, all apart from Spire Global and Velo 3D, improved their EBITDA margin with a particularly remarkable improvement for Virgin Orbit. Now, burn multiple, I'll admit I do not know too much about this, but Rocket Lab, Spire Global, Redwire Space and Terran Global lead the way here. Finally, onto debt analysis, all apart from Terran Orbital, Redwire Space and Spire Global have greater cash than debt. In particular, Redwire has very little cash in comparison to debt, which may be a large reason for the seemingly more attractive valuation, at least through a revenue sense. Virgin Galactic is set 
sat on by far the most cash with over $1 billion. And then finally, Virgin Galactic and Momentous Space were the only companies with a debt to annualized revenue ratio of more than 2x. Now with that, I want to say that again, this article is really good and really interesting. Check it out in the description down below and make sure to subscribe and check out my channel for more in-depth overviews of space stocks such as Rocket Lab. Thanks for watching.